everyone. I have my uh, vegetable garden seeds for 2023 to share with you. I ordered most of my seeds from Botanical Interest, so I will start with going through those. And then I have a couple from Johnny's and Baker Creek. Uh, I did find that the prices were the best at Botanical Interest, so I tried to get most uh, of my seeds from there. So starting with a couple of spring vegetables, I got the Sugar Daddy Snap Peas. I have not grown snap peas before, uh, but I love them and I think they're pretty easy to grow from seed. These say that they are stringless and they're also a shorter plant. They reach 24 to 30 inches tall, so they don't need a huge trellis. And uh, that's why I picked this variety. I got a variety of spinach called La Viva. I think these are just basic spinach seeds, but they did say they have a little bit more heat tolerance and mildew resistance. Danvers carrots, I've grown these before and they worked great for me. Some carrots that I've tried before have given me really puny, tiny carrots, um, but these worked out great. And cabbage is new to me. I got the Copenhagen Market variety. Uh, these are a quicker to mature cabbage and it says that they're smaller so the heads get six to eight inches in diameter and three to four pounds. So it sounded like a good variety to start with. I know some of the cabbages get really really huge and take up a lot of room so, um, so yeah excited to see how these do for me. These are adorable. Um, these are the Patio Choice Yellow Bush Cherry Tomato. Um, so these only get about 18 inches tall and they're great for if you're growing tomatoes in pots or just want to fit as much into your space as you can. So yeah, I plan to have a little vegetable pot on my deck for super easy access to some of my favorite vegetables. And so I'm going to put uh, a plan of these in that. Really excited for these two. So these are Biquinho or biquinho, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. They're Brazilian peppers that are sweet with a little touch of spice. I have a favorite pizza at uh, one of our local restaurants and I'm pretty sure this is the type of pepper that they use on it. So I'm um, hoping to recreate that pizza at home with these. Um, it also says that these are traditionally pickled and served as appetizers or a drink garnish. The other thing that I appreciate, so this includes uh, red and yellow peppers, and they actually dye the seeds so you can see exactly what type of um, pepper you're starting. I'm trying a winter squash this year, uh, which is new to me too. So this is the Table King Acorn Squash. This one is also a smaller variety, uh, so the vine stays uh, four feet long, which is small for a winter squash, so that's why I picked this one. We love eating acorn squash and thought that'd be great to get a stash of this for the fall. I couldn't resist this rainbow quinoa, so uh, we eat quinoa all the time. This looks beautiful too, with all the different colors. Um, it does take 90 to 120 days to mature, so this will be started in the spring and then we really won't get to harvest until the fall if all goes well. But until then, it says that the leaves of the plant can be eaten as kind of spinach. So, sounds fun. Um, and I'll put this kind of at the very back of my vegetable garden area along the fence uh, since they get quite tall. For my cucumber, I picked this gherkin variety. Uh, these are best when you pick them at around four inches long and perfect for pickling. I got a really basic bush bean, uh, so just the Blue Lake bean. Uh, these I picked because they were stringless if picked young and supposed to have just an excellent flavor. Um, in the past I've gotten all the fun colorful varieties of beans which were, you know, beautiful, but I, I just kind of wanted to focus on like what's a good basic, good tasting bean. All right, I could not resist getting ground cherries. I haven't eaten or grown these before. They are kind of like a tomatillo plant, it sounds like, and they taste like a mix between a tomato and a pineapple. Um, so great for snacking, and then um, I've seen a lot of salsa recipes with this too, which sounds fun. And just a couple of basic herbs. I got uh, Italian basil, which I plan to grow a lot of this year. Uh, we like to make pesto, so um, hopefully I won't have to buy as many plants if I'm able to grow these successfully from seed. 
And last from Botanical Interest, I got cilantro, and this is a long-standing Santo cilantro. Uh, it's supposed to be a little bit slower to bolt. And uh, I know it surprised me a lot when I started growing cilantro that it really prefers cool weather and does not like the heat. So it will bolt and go to flower um, in the summertime, which I actually really like the flowers too. Uh, the pollinators like it and I like to cut them. I will probably have to sow this a couple of times. Next, I have a few seeds from Johnny's. Uh, first, tomatillos are a new one for me and I'm super excited to grow these. Um, my husband made a tomatillo salsa last year and it was amazing. So I'm um, hoping this will encourage more batches of that. So one thing I learned uh, from shopping for these is that you have to have at least two plants in order for them to cross pollinate. And um, they also get quite, it's kind of like a big bushy tomato plant. So they can get up to three to four feet wide. Um, so something to know if you're thinking about growing them is that you need a bit of space. These are the Indigo Cherry Drops Tomatoes. These are a cherry tomato that go from kind of a dark red to a blue. So really pretty, and I'm pretty sure I've tasted these before. Um, I tried to match what I ate to the variety online. And they had a really good, deep, like savory flavor. And I'm gonna try watermelon this year. So past two years I've grown cantaloupe and I just wanna mix it up, do something different. Um, I really wanted a seedless watermelon, so that led me to the Johnny's options. And uh, these were really expensive. This seed packet was almost $10, which is crazy. But uh, hopefully they'll be really good. So this is the sorbet variety. It also came with a full sheet of growing instructions, so it doesn't have all the instructions on the back the way the other seed packets do. And then my free seed packet was another watermelon. <laughs> so these are called the pollinator watermelons, which I may save for another year, so I use up my fancy $10 seeds first. But yes, I'm very excited to try watermelons this year. Cantaloupes have always been super easy for me to grow, whether I start them inside or direct seed them. Um, so hopefully watermelons will be the same. All right, at last I have just a couple of seeds from Baker Creek. I have a really fun tomato. This is the Berkeley tie-dye pink tomato. This is a big beefsteak tomato and it says it has a sweet, rich, dark tomato flavor. Uh, and it looks beautiful. So, excited for this. And uh, I got poblano peppers. Uh, this will go kind of in my salsa garden theme with the tomatillos and the ground cherries. So I have not grown these before, um, so hoping this goes well. My free seed packet from Baker Creek were these Japanese wasabi radish. Uh, so that sounds interesting to try. And that is it for all my new vegetable seeds. I have a good variety, I think, for this year, and um, I also feel like I got a good amount that I can direct sow so I don't have to start a million things indoors. So I'd love to hear if you tried any of these in the past and how they grew for you, and uh, subscribe if you want to see how my garden grows this year.